It's time for some set theory. No, 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 no. Don't scroll. Don't scroll yet. Chill. It's just a joke. Was it funny? Well, then I lose their view, I guess. Unfortunately. Let's do a little set theory. Specifically, let's talk about the empty set. So first of all, that is this symbol, this zero with a slash through it, stands for an actual set, but a set that contains nothing. And so in fact, one way that we sometimes symbolize it is a set with nothing in it, curly braces with, you know, nothing between them. But we also use this symbol, the zero with the slash through it, and sometimes we're looking at a set that is not the empty set, but that contains the empty set. And so that's kind of what's going on here. We're going to play a little game of true false and we're gonna try and figure out which of these statements are true and which of them are false let's take the first one because it starts out nice is the empty set an element of so that's what the weird sideways fork means it's an element it is one of the members of the set that contains the empty set yes for sure right this is essentially saying the empty set does that belong to again is it an element of the set that has as an element the empty set? And the answer is for sure, yes. We can see this element right here, the empty set, does belong to that next set. So for A, we would definitely answer true. For B, does the empty set itself belong as an element to a set that contains the empty set and also that contains a set that contains the empty set? Okay, obviously saying it out loud, I can see why this is confusing, but again, we can see the element here on the left. We can see it is one of the elements in the set on the right, and so we would say, yes, the empty set is an element of the set that contains the empty set and this other set that also contains the empty set. And so B is also going to be true. All right, C, is the set that contains the empty set an element of the set that contains the empty set? And this is gonna be our first one that answers false. The set that contains the empty set has an element, but its only element is the empty set itself. And the empty set is not the same as the set that contains the empty set. So no, the set that contains the empty set is not an element of the set that contains the empty set. This video is just going to do gangbusters. I can feel the virality. All right, is the set that contains the empty set an element of the set that contains the set that contains the empty set? This time, yes, we can see right there, the set that contains the empty set is the thing inside those next curly braces. So we are back to being true, and I'm gonna have to make my letters smaller to line up better. Now, on E, we get a new symbol for the first time. This is not the element of symbol, it kind of looks like a C, which I've been confused about before, and I've thought meant contains, but it doesn't. It doesn't mean that at all. It means is a subset of. A subset is a smaller set that has at least some of the elements of the larger set. So for example, a set that has the element one in it is a subset of the set that contains both one and two as elements. In fact, one of the things that we sometimes want to do is to list out all such subsets. So for this particular set that has two elements, our subsets include the set with one, the set with two, the set with both one and two, that counts as a subset, though I think it's called an improper subset, I don't remember, and then also the empty set, importantly, is a subset of this set. In fact, the empty set is a subset of every possible set. One thing to note here is there ended up being four different subsets, and that's not a coincidence. In general, the number of subsets is the same thing as two raised to the number of elements in the big overall set. So since we had two elements here in our big overall set, we should have been expecting four different possible subsets. So back to our problem here, is the empty set itself a subset of the set that contains the empty set and the set that contains the empty set as elements? Yes. If for no other reason than the fact that, again, the empty set is the special set that is a subset of every other set. <laughs> I am not going to upload this video. I am. I am going to upload this video, and you're going to love it. Oh, I got my weird little circle thing there. All right, just two more. And Jenna Cruz, Mrs. Meowmertz, I, I sympathize with you. This does not feel like math, right? All right, F is the set that contains the empty set, a subset of a set that contains, as its two elements, the empty set, not nothing, but the set that contains nothing, and the set that contains the set 
that contains nothing. Little trickier here, but the answer is yes. You can see that same element on both sides. The set that contains the empty set is an element of the set on the right. Oh wait, we didn't want it to be an element. We wanted it to be a subset. Oh wait. Okay, what would our subsets be here? Hold on a second. If we have a set with the empty set and the set that contains the empty set as our element, that is we've got two elements here. And so again, we should be expecting four subsets. There is the improper subset of the original set itself, but then there would also be the set that contains the empty set. So that is the set that has the first element here, the set that contains the set that contains the empty set, that would be the second element here. And then of course the empty set itself, which is a subset of every possible set. And so, yeah, that should be true, right? We've got the set that contains the empty set was a subset of this particular set. So yeah, I feel good about F. F should also be true. Okay, and this last one. Is the set that contains the set that contains the empty set a subset of the set that contains, as its elements, two elements, the empty set and the set that contains the empty set? Well, let's bring back this list of sets and subsets. Every set is its own subset. Again, we call that an improper subset. And then of course, all of the sets that contain elements in whatever combination of our original set are also subsets. And we can see right here, the set that contains the set that contains the empty set is indeed one of those four subsets we looked at earlier. So G is also true. If you were relying on the old standby, pick all true and hope for the best, you would have done very well on this quiz. Thus ends my foray into hoping that a video about the empty set and the sets that contain the empty set will go super viral. Thanks for watching. Comment down below with all the things I got wrong, set theorists. I'll see y'all next time.